In today's video, I show you how you can identify a Steiner lesion on MRI. If you don't know what a Steiner lesion is or how it's supposed to look like on a diagram, go check Google for good images. So I'm not going to show you here too many images, just here to remember that the ulnar collateral ligament has two bundles. That's not the important fact, but they are running from dorsally to volarly in this direction here. So keep that in mind. I will come back to this later. This is now the ulnar collateral ligament here. We are on the dorsal aspect of the MCP joint. This is the origin and we are now scrolling volarly and you can see the ligament, the ligament is going here in this direction. From dorsal to volar in this kind of oblique orientation. Back again. Okay. The other important structure is the adductor pollicis aponeurosis or also tendon and just to remember it has two portions there is a transverse head and um, oblique head and then they fuse together here and insert into the base of the proximal phalanx and also are in continuation with the extensor hood overlaying the MCP joint here. So just to show you this again this is the adductor pollicis here and this one is the second head so this one here and below we have the UCL here. We can also see this here on our axials. We have these two heads. They fuse together here into the aponeurosis here. And below the aponeurosis, we have the ulnar collateral ligament. And here we have the extensor hood. And this is in continuation. While this one here, then also inserting into the base here. And below that, we have the ulnar collateral ligament. And if we go from proximal to distal, we can see it's running molarly. That was the key anatomy. Now before we move on, make sure to subscribe to my channel and also hit the like button and the notification button, then you get automatically notified every time I upload a new video. So what's happening is you have your thumb here and then your joint goes <coughs> and then when it's strong enough to force and you move it back, then the ligament gets flipped around here and then cannot go back into its original position. So that's the stainer lesion. It's probably best to start on your coronals and you have here the MCP joint and what you then want to do is to identify the UCL or the course the UCL should take and also the aponeurosis. And we can see here it's the origin of the UCL and we, here is the, is the radial ligament, radial collateral ligament and what we want to have here is a similar structure as on the radial side. So we have here probably the origin of the ligament and then instead of going up here it's going here laterally and is laying over the aponeurosis here. So this could be referred to as a yo-yo on a string sign, which is the classical sign for a Steiner lesion. You can also see this here on this transfer section. We are now proximally and we are moving to the direction of the metacarpal head. And you can see that the ligament should go from the dorsal aspect to volarly here, but there is no ligament visible here below the aponeurosis here. This is the aponeurosis and below there should be a black structure. And if we go proximally again, we can see that here this structure here is the stenal lesion laying over the aponeurosis here. But I think it's easier to assess here on this coronal. So this is the second case and we are starting on the dorsal side of the MCP joint and you can see there is some edema and stuff like that. But go to the metacarpal head on the dorsal aspect at the level of the origin here of the UCL and then what you want to check whether there is a ligament going up here to the base volarly and there is not. So we have some ligament structure here which is fuzzy and it's not taut. It's really here this torn ligament and then here is part of the aponeurosis of the adductor pollicis or the tendon rather and you can follow it down here. So this is the adductor pollicis here and if we are going dorsally, we see here this structure laying over the aponeurosis here. Part of the aponeurosis, there is a gap. This is part of the ligament. But if we go dorsally, we have here part of the ligament overlaying the aponeurosis here. So this is again a steno lesion. This is the metacarpal bone. We know that the ligament is starting on the dorsal aspect and is then going distally, volarly. And here we can see the ligament here. And this here, this structure here is the aponeurosis which is partially torn here I think 
and that's the stainer lesion and the ligament should run below here onto the base. This is just another case. So we again here are on the level of the metacarpal joint and we go dorsally at the origin here and you can immediately see a stenal lesion here. So that's the stenal lesion. This is part of the aponeurosis. Again, we have a yo-yo on a string sign and this ligament should belong up here going molarly distal here onto the base, but it's not. And here is the adductor uh, polycis, the two heads, and then also part here of the aponeurosis, this one here, going into the extensor hole, this is the connection there. Okay, let me make this big so you can really see it. So this should belong below here. This is part of the aponeurosis here, and this also here, the two heads. Let's see if we can see this on our transverse. I would start proximally. Then we know on the dorsal aspect we have the UCL origin and this is the stenal lesion immediately visible here. And then if we go distally we can see the extensor hood and the aponeurosis here. There you can see it's part of the extensor hood and then aponeurosis. And if we go further distally then you can see where the adductor inserts here. So we have the two heads here. They are inserting here at this level in communication with the extensor hood here and dorsally to that there is the stainer lesion. So I think they are both complementary and you should always have a look at both of them. Just to repeat myself again, another case here, MCP joint, dorsal aspect, origin of the UCL. We should have a ligament going up here. It's not. It's black here. It's here um, flipped under the aponeurosis here. And again, some kind of a yo-yo on a string sign here again. All right. And if we go here medially, we can see here the adductor pollicis tendon, which is then inserted in here. And here is part of the aponeurosis. And you can also see this here dorsal aspect origin and we have below here this is the aponeurosis and the ligament should be below here as I have shown you at the beginning of the video and if we go a little bit more proximally we can see it's laying over here over the aponeurosis so this is the stenal lesion this part here Sometimes it's not so easy to make the distinction between the adductor pollicis tendon and the aponeurosis but the big thing here is the adductor pollicis tendon and the aponeurosis is a thinner structure which is then uh, flowing and in connection or continuation with the extensor root here. And this is the last case. Again we are at the level of the MCP joint. This is the origin here. We are looking for a band like structure going here molarly onto the base and it's actually doing it. Oh wow, look at this. So this is now again the normal thing. Here's the aponeurosis and the adductor pollicis tendon nicely visible here. So this is the aponeurosis here and below we have the UCL going from proximally to distally in a volar direction under the aponeurosis and here is the adductor pollicis muscle and the aponeurosis blending in here with the extensor hood. That's it for today. Thanks for watching and if you like the format with several cases of the same pathology going a little bit into a repetitive mode here. Uh, if you like it comment below. If you don't like it comment below as well and I'm trying to adapt my style of teaching here. And also don't forget to check out my new book. There is a trailer coming soon and you can also find the link down in the description. Thanks for watching. See you next time.